Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Hi, my name is Amy. On this channel, I post about frugal living and feeding your family on a budget. So if you like that kind of thing, I'd love it if you'd press the subscribe button. Right, so today's video, this is one that I mentioned a while ago and I haven't actually had a chance to get to yet, so I thought I would do it now, is about store cupboard essentials and the things that I personally consider essential to keep on hand all of the time. As long as I've got these things, I know that I can make a meal, even if we've got no other food in the house, I can make a meal with these items. It's not an extensive list of everything that's in my pantry, and I'll add on a few other little bits and pieces that I've got that I use regularly, but these are the basic core items. Cooking at home and using these kind of items in your cooking does really help to lower your food bill. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So first thing that I think everybody should have is pasta of some description. So pasta, spaghetti, anything like that. Same goes for noodles as well. Those things, even if you've got you know a few leftovers in the fridge or something like that, you can just bung together a really quick meal really cheaply. So next up is tomato-based products. So things like passata or tomato puree or chopped tomatoes, anything like that. They're a brilliant base for pasta sauces and all of those kind of things. Also use them in, um, you know, use a bit in casseroles and things like that. They all count towards your five a day and just add an awful lot of flavor to things. They're a brilliant base. Rice, if possible, something um, sort of brown rice rather than white rice, just to give you that extra bit of healthiness in your diet. But rice, as well as being used just as an accompaniment to things, it's brilliant in soups to bulk out. You can bung all sorts of bits with it and come up with a fried rice really, really quickly. So it's a great way of using up leftovers in a really healthy and cheap way. It makes brilliant lunches. Just always be careful with rice when it comes to cooling it down quickly enough. Um, otherwise it can be a bit dangerous. So just make sure that you're doing it correctly. And rice is brilliant. Dried beans or lentils, pulses, um, split peas, anything like that. They all count towards your five a day. They are a brilliant source of protein as well. And they're fantastic for bulking out meals. They will absorb various different flavors of everything that you're cooking with it. So they add an awful lot to your meal without adding a lot of cost. Same sort of vein as beans and those kind of things. Really good for bulking is porridge oats. Fantastic for breakfasts, obviously, but you can add them to all sorts of meals just to bulk out whatever it is that you're cooking. They're really good for you, really nutritious, and fantastic at keeping your costs down. Along with dried beans, I always have baked beans as well. Baked beans you can use just straight from the tin in lots of different dishes, so either get rid of the sauce or don't get rid of the sauce, depending on what you're making. Obviously you can have them as baked beans on toast and all that sort of thing as well, but don't discount them as an ingredient to go in something. They can be really nice and chilly, um, and they're just so easy, you just bung it in. They're a great alternative, we find, to kidney beans. Don't like kidney beans. These are also cheaper than kidney beans. Chickpeas. Chickpeas are great. I use them in a lot of different dishes. The um, curry recipe that I've got on my channel uses chickpeas. They're a great source of protein, but they're also really good. You can just sort of oven them or do them in an air fryer or something like that and put some flavoring on them and they make great sort of like crisps or alternative to crisps. They're sort of like a really crunchy, healthy treat. Soup, so tomato soup and chicken soup. Um, these obviously on their own, they're great, but you can use these as sauces as well. So when you're cooking, maybe you're cooking a um, pasta dish or something and you don't have all of the other ingredients you need to make your sauce, you can just use a can of soup. And it's really nice, it's really good. Just a can of soup and a can of water and whatever else you're putting in with some pasta and pop it in the oven, it's brilliant. Stock cubes, stock cubes, I use all the time, pretty much every dish I will use at least one stock cube. I do also make my own stock, but for convenience sake, these are just brilliant. And also making your own stock, although it is 
relatively cheap in terms of the ingredients depending on how you're doing it it can cost a lot in terms of energy usage these particular stock cubes are great if you're making a meal and you don't have meat um, these add an awful lot of flavor if you put these with a tomato sauce and pasta it really does taste like you've got a meaty dish if you pop some beans or something in there to give you a bit more of a texture to it they're absolutely brilliant salt and pepper um, any kind of salt is great I do use sea salt a lot as well peppercorns as well I always grind them but I don't always buy the mills you can buy big bags of them from um, most supermarkets buy a big bag of it just the peppercorns themselves and just refill these containers tinned fish tinned fish is brilliant it's high in protein it's low in fat really good for you and it's relatively inexpensive as well so if you're trying to keep your costs down with your food budget it's great to always have some of this around you can add it to so many different types of meals tinned vegetables and tinned fruit a way of getting um, some of your five a day into you and also a way of just making meals stretch a bit further so that allows you to use less meat which is generally the most expensive part of your meal and tinned fruit the same I mean peaches are actually really really nice in curry um, don't know why it works but it does a brilliant thing to have around flour both self-raising flour and plain flour always worth keeping in the cupboard spices my main go-to's are mild chili smoked paprika and cumin they are the ones that I use the most of so they are the three that I just wouldn't be without there are a lot of other herbs and spices and things that I have in my cupboard, but these three are probably the ones that I use most often, along with basic mixed herbs. Now, if you can, if you can have a full range in your cupboard, get separate herbs. So thyme, basil and oregano are three that I think I use the most. Um, but mixed herbs are a really good substitute if you are lacking on space or the budget to buy more. Oil, obviously for frying and general cooking purposes but also for making crackers and flatbreads if you just add some to some flour and a bit of salt and pepper and things like that you can come up with your own wraps so those are my essential store cupboard items I do have some extra bits and pieces that I'm going to show you that are things that I use a lot in my cooking but they're not things that you know if I if I had to then I could live without them now particularly at the moment it's a bit trickier to be going to the supermarket all the time so just having these things on hand is brilliant and it means that if I can't get out to go to the shop or can't get a delivery or something like that then I know that I always have food in that I can make good healthy nutritious meals out of even if it is all from the pantry soy sauce because it adds so much flavor to all sorts of recipes and these stock pots um, Tesco's do these as both red wine and white wine. We don't drink, so we don't have alcohol in the house. So if I want to cook something that would use wine, we will never have it on hand. And there is no way I'm buying a whole bottle of wine just to cook a meal with. These work out to be about 30p a stock pot. So they are expensive um, in relation to normal stock cubes and things. But if you're making a meal with these kind of flavours in, they really do add a really deep richness. The flavour really does go a long way. So out of one stock pot, I can make a meal that would last us about three days. So And they freeze quite well as well once they're cooked in. So you can sort of make a bigger batch of something and then spread it out. Whole grain mustard is absolutely great. You can make up sort of dressings and things out of it with some honey, um, or you can cook with it as well and it just adds a really lovely flavour to things and the same goes for balsamic vinegar in terms of dressings I don't tend to actually cook this into dishes as because it is quite sweet it can burn quite easily so just keep the temperatures low if you're cooking with it but it just adds so much flavour the last thing I want to show you I cook with cream quite a lot and we used to go through an awful lot of cream because I'd buy some to make a meal with and um, 
end up not using the whole thing and then we have to throw some out which is something I absolutely hate doing it's so wasteful to be throwing food out um, and I absolutely hate it so I found this which is a cream substitute double cream substitute in Tesco's and it's actually really really good it lasts a lot longer in the fridge once it's opened and it's also it works out a lot cheaper than double cream as well it cooks brilliantly so it really really works well for different sources so that was a very basic overview of the things I keep in my store cupboard like I say there are a lot of other things that go into it however if you are just getting sort of started with what things you need around if you want to be able to keep your cooking cost low this is a good list to kind of get you started these are products that I use all of the time and without them I know that our food bill would be a lot higher these things will add a lot of bulk to your meal also a lot of flavor to your meal and they're all well for the most part they're fairly nutritious as well also with these ingredients even if you have nothing else in the house you would be able to make meals I hope that video has helped you and um, if you've liked this video please give me a thumbs up and like I said before I would love it if you would subscribe if you want to stick around and see more from me I haven't done any meal plans recently and um, food hauls. It's just because the way that I've been shopping has been a bit different. So I've been doing much larger shops and just doing one of them um, just due to the current situation. If that carries on, I think what I might do is in February, I'll do kind of like my big shop for the month and the meal plan for the month so that you guys can all see that. So the food hauls and things will be back. It's just a little bit different at the moment. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.